Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how I did this sketch in my sketchbook using Brusho. Brusho is a pigment powder and it's a lot of fun to use and I haven't used it in a while. I started off with this photo that I took from my walk this morning. I, uh, it had snowed and um, I'm taking part in the plain April challenge, which is painting outside every day, but I wasn't going to paint outside in the snow. So um, I took a photo and I brought it home. And if you're curious as to how I am approaching the plain April challenge, I put posted my personal rules on my blog. And basically, I'm going to paint outside or draw outside anytime I can. If not, I'm going to work from my own reference photos or work from a still life setup in my home. Um, that way I can keep up with it because it's pretty cold in Maine in April. And as you can see, it snows. So um, yeah, I'm going to just basically try to draw every day from life or from a photo that I've taken. I'm using a fountain pen that I filled with Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiance um, ink in the color sepia. And I'm using that to sketch these rocks. Because the rocks are kind of brownish and just wet with the rain and the snow, I thought when this bleeds out, when I add water to it, it'll be perfect. And it is. I really love this ink. You can get it by the bottle. It's not terribly expensive. And it's basically a liquid watercolor. Now, the one downside to this, but it's also the downside to Brusho, but I'm working in a sketchbox, so I'm not worried about this, is that the uh, the ink is not light fast, which means it could fade in exposure to daylight. But this is going to be in my sketchbook, and I don't have to worry about it being exposed to daylight. So just kind of a fun... Um, a fun thing to play with. And that's what I'm doing with Plain April. I'm taking these daily drawings as a chance to play and explore and improve my speed in drawing. And I kept this drawings part real time so you can see how slow it can go. Um, there were little bits of rock in the background. I wanted to get those in. And also there's a tree line um, in the back. And I took this photo during my morning walk with my dog. She likes to walk rain or shine. It doesn't matter. She wants to be out. And um, I figured that'd be perfect. Perfect because not only will Plain April be a fun monthly challenge, but it will be kind of a, um, a peek at what the weather was like all April here in Maine. So there you can see my little box of different pigment powders. And I use a bunch of different brands. I have some by the brand Brusho. I have some by the brand um, Ken Oliver Colorburst. I have some by Infusions. And um, I did tape off a border on my page and I just, you saw me kind of pressing it down with my finger because I wanted to make sure that the, the water and ink wasn't going to seep under. This is nothing like a nice white border Order, right when you are when you take the, the tape off and it looks all satisfying so I wanted to make sure I had that and plus the pigment powder can be kind of messy I didn't want there to be unactivated specks of it on the edge of my sketchbook to be reactivated at some other time and I probably will not paint on the facing page just because there could be dust this stuff you have to be kind of careful because it can go it can go everywhere and make a mess. So um, as we go along, you kind of see how I handle it so I don't make too bad of a mess. Now I'm wetting the paper where I want to have the brush show basically because this is a very light powder. It's going to cling to the water and it's going to give us kind of like a firework effect. Um, there are a few other brands of it that I've tried. I've tried the ones from Magenta, which is a stamp company, and I didn't find that to be quite as a nice as the ones from Brusho um, or Ken Oliver or um, Infusions, which are made by Paper Artsy. I've also tried some by the Cosmic Shimmer Company. I think it's called Cosmic Shimmer, Creative Imaginations maybe, and that was pretty good too. Um, I just, they didn't fit in this box, so they're, it's still in the uh, room of Horde. Apparently I should get a bare box so they're all together. But um, something you could do if you don't have this and you just kind of want to play with the idea is um, you can get like a tie-dye kit. It's very similar to that that dye and the tie-dye kit is very similar. Um, and you can find those bottles at the Dollar Tree. So you definitely could get going for a small investment. But I will say that the amount of pigment in these bottles is more than what you'd get in the Dollar Tree tie-dye kit. Um, and you can get the colors individually like at Blick. That's that's where I started off. I got um, some of the brush out at Blick and back then it was about $3.50, $3.50, a little pot of color. I don't know what it is now, probably more because this was quite a long time when I first got them, but they last so long. So, um, you know, definitely worth checking out. Now, something I'm going to tell you about this is that you do not want to uncap these. You want to just take a pin like a thumbtack and poke a hole in the cover of either the infusions 
or the Ken Oliver color, I mean the um, uh, the brush out because you don't want that powder going everywhere. It's just so concentrated. You only want a couple specks. That's why it lasts you so long. With the Ken Oliver Color Burst, they actually come with a, uh, a fine tip spout. So I have to say packaging wise, I prefer the Ken Oliver Color Burst products. And you can get like a six pack of those for I think around um, $30 on Amazon that has a really great assortment of colors. So you could kind of choose the, the color family that you like the most and start there and then see what you think. But um, I do have to say their packaging packaging is much nicer. And the thing that I also like about their packaging is that if you like to use stencils, you can lay a stencil down on a piece of paper, spray it with water, lift off the stencil, and then you can kind of puff, like have the, the bottle kind of at an angle and puff, and it will just kind of send out air and powder and cover your stencil really well. And that's something you don't have with the other ones. They say not to do that. They say not to squeeze the bottle, probably because they don't want you to get too much out. But if you have it on its edge, so you're getting air and powder at the same time, that's kind of an advantage. So quality wise, I'd say they're all about the same. Color Burst was the first to come out that I know of. But um, the, uh, I'm sorry, no, the brush was the first to come out. But yeah, they're, they're all very similar. And what I was doing here, I brought a little palette in because you can use these pigments as a watercolor as well. And just kind of either pick it up with your brush and spread it around um, like I was doing here, or actually sprinkle some on the palette and add water and make a watercolor that way. Uh, so it's, it's a very, it's a very creative product. Um, it's a very fun product, but it's also very easy to go overboard with it. And I, the reason I didn't narrate this while I was painting was because I feel like I really need to concentrate with this because I always go overboard. I think, I think this might be the first time I've ever used this where I didn't go overboard. The only other exception was there was a window box painting I did and I have a real time and a time lapse of it up on my YouTube channel. But um, I started it off, there was like some ger um, geraniums in a window basket and I started it off with brush -o for like the geraniums and then I switched over to regular watercolor. But I think if I tried to do that all in brush -o, I totally would have gone overboard. But um, you got to really, uh, I guess, go easy with this stuff because a little goes a long way. And you can see the beautiful textures that I have in those rocks. Oh, my head's in the way. You see my, uh, it was hair wash day. So I have these like humongous curlers in my hair. Cause after when my hair gets to the damp stage and I just roll it up in these big curlers. <laughs> anyway, my head got in the way. I didn't really, I didn't notice that when I was editing it down. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of, kind of getting some of that super, super bright area out of the snow, which I ended up adding in some white at the end. And probably if I didn't, if I hadn't gone in and toned that, I wouldn't have needed to, but you know, that it, it is what it is. I, I, mm, I don't know. I, cause I did take a photo of it before and after I added the white and I did like it better after I added the white, but if I just didn't add the white there, it probably would have been better off. And I don't know about using masking fluid with the brush show because when you're removing the masking fluid, you either have to rub it with your fingers or you have to lift it with a pickup tool. And I just think there would be a really strong, uh, likelihood of you getting that brush out on the masking tool pickup or on your fingers and smearing it. So I probably would just exercise a little bit of restraint as you're, um, as you're applying the brush out and as you're smear, like kind of pushing it around with the brush and just try to go on the side of, um, Inter interacting with it less and using less powder. I mean, I just love those little color bleeds that you get when like the brush show kind of hits a little wet spot on the paper and then it just kind of bleeds out. I just think it's kind of magical. And I hope this isn't super boring for you. I wanted to keep it real time so that it didn't, uh, so you could kind of see how long it takes. Here I'm trying to lift out some of the color that got a little too dark and the brush I'm using for this is a soft scrubber by Royal and Lane Nickel. And you can find that in their Menta their Zen and their Nocturna Pro lines of brushes. And I know that the uh, Menta and the Zen is probably around $4 a brush. Maybe, I think it runs between two fifty dollars and five, dollars depending on where you buy it. And I'm not sure about the Nocturna Pro because I think that's a little bit more expensive of a brush. But um, the, the bristles are all golden taclon and they're just a short filbert and it is perfect for scrubbing on watercolor paper without damaging the paper. Other scrubbers like stiff scrubbers and scrubbers from other lines of brushes that I've tried have all been too abrasive. They've been that like hard white nylon bristle that just kind of tears at the watercolor paper. So I highly recommend that in um, any of those lines of brushes, they all appear to be the same bristles. I have each to try and they all are the same. Um, 
If you can't find that, there's another brush that I like. You might have it in your stash. I'm not sure if it's even made anymore, but it's called a Maxine's Mop, and it was a toll painting brush, and it's actually a hog bristle, but um, it's about the same stiffness, and it works really great for lifting on watercolor paper. And that basically just did a little bit of softening some of the dark areas. Now I've added some of the black brush -o onto my palette, added some water, and I'm using a liner brush to get in there and uh, kind of add some shadows right underneath the thick snow because the snow is very heavy, wet, sticky snow. And it left like really thick um, clumps of snow on the rock. So I wanted to get some strong shadows underneath the uh, the snow clumps. And I just, I love the way the rocks are looking right now. I love that texture. I love the um, speckles. I love just, it's, I think it's such a pretty look. And it's kind of funny that like granulating watercolors have been so popular over the last couple of years. It seems like brush has kind of been forgotten about and then granulating watercolors have taken over all of the attention. And it's like, if you just use some brush into some of your washes, you'd get a very similar effect. Now, of course, some of the brush colors are all like a pigment powder, but they're a pigment powder, but I think technically they're a dye. Um, so they're not light fast to my knowledge. I don't think any of those are, are light fast, but it's, um, it's just something to think about if you're looking for that really heavily textured effect. You really can't beat brush or any of these other pigment powders. I think the pigment powders maybe took more of a hold in the craft world. Um, but boy, they're a lot of fun. And I, this is the year of using my favorites. And I definitely can see myself leaving this box of pigment powders in my... Um, main filming room to use more often. The only downside is after you've used these, even if you're just working in a sketchbook and you're being really careful, you still want to take a, uh, a rag in water and just wipe down your table and you will see little specks on that rag, um, no matter how careful you are. And just, you know, I would be careful not to go crazy with it. If you're holding it like a couple inches over your paper and tapping on the back of it, I think that it's relatively safe. Um, you don't want to go shaking it like, you know, crazy like glitter or anything because then that would get in the air you could wear a desk mask if you're worried about it i don't think you need a respirator or anything the, the pigments are not that fine um, but just to be careful especially if you have asthma or any sort of um, allergies to dust if you have an allergy to dust you may want to avoid this but boy it is a super fun product and um it was it was delightful and i think that's what i really love about doing a daily art challenge whether it be inktober or world watercolor month or figurary or plain april the fact that you're doing something every day or a 100 day challenge the fact that you're doing something every day i think it kind of takes some intimidation away because you have another chance tomorrow to redeem yourself if you do something that's totally awful um i have been posting my my paintings daily on Instagram for those of you that are interested. I don't know if I'll post everything because some things may just be kind of quick and junky and not something I want on my grid. I might do like a, I don't know, a story or something. I don't know. Um, and I've been posting every couple of days on YouTube on my community tab just to kind of show people what I'm up to and hopefully inspire other people to get out there and paint too because I am trying to take a photo of where where I'm painting just so if other people want to follow along they can um I do that I have created a challenge myself called the sketchbook floozies challenge and basically it is to use up our sketchbooks because I am such a sketchbook floozy I have probably I added it up I can't even remember how many it was but it was a lot it was dozens of active sketchbooks going. I have them tucked everywhere. I have them in every vehicle. I have them in every little nook and cranny of my house. I have them here and there and everywhere. <laughs> I like to paint them in my kayak. I like to paint them here and there. I like to paint them everywhere. Yeah, when I started that, I'm like, what rhymes with kayak? I have nothing to rhyme with kayak. But And I don't keep them stashed in my kayak because my kayak is under a foot of snow at the moment. Um, but yeah, I have little to-go bags everywhere. It's a uh, it's a problem, but it's a good problem, I think. I just mm, I just love the way this media looks. And if I was like, well, I'm going to paint this one thing and it's the only thing I'm going to do for the next three days, I would be really choosy about what I'm working on. But where it's like, I got another chance tomorrow. I'm going to do this sketch. It's a pile of rocks, for goodness sake. It's not going to be a masterpiece. I can you know, take a chance on this weird medium and play with it. Or I could take a chance on this weird paper that may have lost its sizing. Or I could take a chance on this bizarre pen that may not work. But this paper is rough. In this sketchbook, by the way, it is, um, I made it out of Fabriano Uno, which I don't even make that paper anymore, rough, that I bought like 20 years ago. I didn't know if the sizing was going to be any good. I think, honestly, older paper was made better. Because I have like dipped into old arches that I bought 20 years ago. I have a lot of older paper because I used to teach in a studio setting. 
and I would buy in bulk. And I still have some of that. And those older papers have held up so much better than paper I bought three or four years ago. It's amazing. I don't know if techniques have changed or the quality of the products has changed or what, but um, I know an artist that uses Wattman paper from the 70s and the, the sizing is still good on it. So I don't know what the new fangled paper manufacturing processes are like, but I, I don't think it's as good as the old stuff. Now here I'm doing a technique called side loading. I've put some of the uh, blue brush out in my palette, added water, and I have wet my brush, blotted it off, and dipped one side in the paint, and then I'm side loading to shade that tree line in the background to push it back um, and to kind of give it a little bit more contrast so that my painting is a little bit more interesting. Now I'm just taking some of that color and I am adding it here and there to shade the, like, the snow drifts, I guess. Now my photo was very blown out. There isn't this much interest in my photo. I am kind of just... Uh, prettying it up from my own imagination. And I think that's fine. At the end of the day, I want to be happy with this drawing that I'm doing. I want it to be interesting. I want it to, I want to look back at it and be like, yeah, I like that. And I just, um, I started with my photo and went on from there. And I think that's totally fine. I love whimsical landscapes. To be, to be, um, to be honest, landscapes are probably not something I'm drawn to as frequently as other topics. So um, I want to do things in it to make me interested. And by the way, if you want to learn landscape painting, I have my watercolor landscape workshop 40% off in my teachable school this month. The I'll, click, I'll put a link in the video description that is a discount link that'll give you 40% off through the end of April, 2024. And if for some reason you're going to my school and just Googling it, use the coupon code PLAINAIR to save 40% on watercolor landscape workshop through the end of April, 2024. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to do a challenge similar to this, but you can't get out to paint or it's not, you know, the weather isn't good where you are this time of year, like like me, you could break that that course up over a month and you could do something every day. And by the end of the month, you would have a really great uh, foundation for landscape painting. So I uh, just wanted to do that since I'll be doing landscapes all month. I love to, you know, share deals with people and help people learn. And then you get feedback from me in the class. You get my attention. Um, that's basically what you're paying for. You're paying for my instruction and my attention in that class. And uh, I want to help people become better painters and get more enjoyment out of their painting. So if that sounds good to you, check out the link in the video description. I'd love to see you in class. And I've added a little bit more detail in the tree line in the back just by using that liner brush and kind of flicking in some more kind of skinny trees. And I'm giving this a really good dry and now I'm taking the tape off. Make sure your paper's dry before you ever remove your masking tape because um, if you remove tape from damp paper, you probably are going to tear it. And I just, I love the way this looks. I was um, kind of debating whether I wanted to do more to it at this point, but um, I want to kind of have a little visual record of what it looked like here. But then I decided after waiting a bit. Sorry for the shake. My, um, my camera's on a stick on the ceiling, basically. I decided that I needed a little bit more contrast in the background, so I wet it, and then I sprinkled in some more brush -o. And then I'll just kind of, um, you know, just uh, manipulate it a bit with a brush. But um, yeah, I, I wanted to definitely have some more, some more depth back there. And you could just leave it and see what it does. You don't have to add the brush to it, but I felt like adding some, you know, more trees and like focusing some of the, uh, the color in some shapes was going to help me. Um, but of course, you know, that's up to you. And I feel like using brush out is a very intuitive way to paint. You can't really, you can control it to an effect. You can control it by where you put your paint. You can control it by manipulating it with the brush a bit, but there's going to be a certain amount that's out of your control. Now here I've taken some green brush out, some phthalo green, actually phthalo green color burst, which is a Ken Oliver powder. And I'm just kind of dabbing in some loose um, evergreens, like some loose pine trees in there. Do they really look like pine trees? No, they're just kind of like a blurry a mush of color, but that's fine because the focus is on the rocks and everything way back there should be blurry. We want to create that depth and you create depth by having something in focus and then the other things that are further behind it or maybe even further in front of it blurry. And that's what gives you that, uh, that depth in a scene. And I feel it makes a landscape a lot more interesting. Um, and then I still have some of the black brush out that I've added water to on my palette. I'm picking some of that up. I'm basically just using about five colors of brush out or powder and reusing those. And the reason I wanted to do that is because these pigment powders have several colors in them. So like the black has some 
black, it has some yellow, it has some purple, um, I think it might even have some red. These, these colors, the ones that I like the most, have multiple pigment granules in them. So when you sprinkle them out, you get those bursts of interesting colors. Um, not all powders are like that though. I think some are like more solid colors. It really just depends on, um, on what you're getting. And, um, and the colors I think I used were, I think sea green, olive green, um, and black from Brusho and turquoise from Brusho. And then I had, um, uh, it was like a fuchsia infusions, I think, which was a couple different colors mixed up. And then I used the thalo green from Ken Oliver Color Burst. And the thalo green might have been a single color. I'm using just the uh, the black brush o liquefied to sign my name. And again, at this point, I'm not sure. I was thinking that I was probably done. Um, and I think I could have been done. I think I could have left it like this, but. I did decide that I'm going to put a little bit of white in there afterwards. Um, a little error there. I started that tree just slightly below the snow drift that I had back there, but eh, oh well, it's fine. I kind of dipped the snow drift a little bit lower just to make it uh, to make it work a little bit better. So here I'm using some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and it had dried up quite a bit. I had to add some water to it and give it a stir. And I'm just going to go in with a small round brush. And when I'm doing these final details, I definitely go with a small brush because I don't want to, um, I don't want to do anything drastic at this stage of the game. And I'm just kind of dabbing in a little bit of bright white at the top of the snowdrifts where it would be the brightest or it would be catching the light. Um, it would be reflecting more light. Um, anything that's kind of rounded and at the top, right? Uh, so that's what I'm doing just to kind of bring back some of that shape to the snowdrifts that I feel like I lost. Was it necessary? I don't know. Like I love that blurry green on that, that little bump in the middle. I think I left that as is because I just thought that was really pretty. But I just wanted to make sure I was catching the light with some of those snowdrifts because it is a very abstract painting of rocks. But rocks, the, the photo of rocks that I took was not that interesting. So I had to kind of... Uh, I love rocks, by the way. I love to paint rocks, not, not to paint on rocks, but I love to paint paintings of rocks because I find them to be just very interesting. I love the sculpture of them basically. And so I wanted to add a little bit of the interest that I generally see in rocks and the wonder that I take in them and just kind of, I don't know, make them a little bit more interesting to people that maybe don't look at rocks like I look at rocks and, and see the sculptural, the sculptural texture and the beauty and stuff um and kind of uh I don't know bring it to more of what I had in my imagination my mind's eye of what a pile of rocks could look like what a pile of rocks could be and um and I think I I succeeded in that I'm happy with the way this came out also by adding this white to these foreground rocks it helps make them the the kind of the star of the show and pushes the other items more into the background a bit but just go easy if you're going to add the white maybe like I gave it a break I walked away for a bit and then I came back give it some time if you're thinking about adding white to a watercolor or a brush or painting I think is the best advice and even sometimes I regret it I've got to be honest um but I think this worked out pretty well because it was able it made me able to smooth out that snow blanket, which is very smooth. Uh, it's very smooth yet thick. Um, and otherwise, I don't think I would have gotten that effect. Uh, it almost needs that bit of body and weight and heaviness that an actual white paint is going to give it that just that weightiness. It is there's a reason why they call gouache body color. It's because it's got that body that volume, that heft to it. Um, and I think that was a that was a, a good choice for this particular instance, in my opinion. Um, and you can let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried brush -o? Do you like it? Is it something that you're considering adding to your stash? I will link to the, uh, the products that I used as long as they're still available. I'm assuming they still are. I know that the brush -o is, and I'm pretty sure the Ken Oliver color bursts are, um, and yeah, use whatever brushes that you have. I used some of my uh, brushes that I had done previously with Craft Ammo. I have a Creative Mark Mimic there. And uh, I have the Royal Magnical Soft Scrubber brushes. But um, I, I don't think it, you know, I think you could pretty much use anything with the brush show. And there you can see some close-ups of the work. I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this step-by-step uh, -step demo. Thank you so much for watching. And I would appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to learn more, check out my watercolor landscape workshop. We don't use brush show, but we do learn all about the fundamentals of landscape painting. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy crafting.